There's actually a word for the rebirth of Greco-Roman philosophies that give rise to the new version of democracy, and that is the Renaissance. The Renaissance, by the way, the word means rebirth, right? It's rebirth. Ironically, it was the Muslims who did not burn the writings of the Greco-Roman philosophies. The Christians did. They burned the writings of Aristotle. They burned the writings of many of these uh, pagan philosophers. And so they didn't have access to that stuff in the quote-unquote dark ages. But the Muslims had access to those writings and used them for a long time. And it was during the Crusades that the Muslims shared those writings with the Christians. They interfaced, and those started coming back to Europe. And so Europe started getting these ideas from the past that they had not had, and they were enamored with them. And so the Renaissance was really this rebirth of all of these ancient pagan Roman and Greek philosophies, traditions, values, beliefs. And the Renaissance really begins in, what, the 14th century or so. And it begins to kind of crawl along. So it leads to an explosion of knowledge and philosophy, this ancient pagan Greco-Roman philosophy, uh, science, politics, religion, music, art and architecture, technique, which we would call technology. Technology is really just technique, literature. And one of the men who really bring this idea back and with a vengeance, the first time we really see the word appear in writing democracy after the fall of the Roman uh, Republic is through the pen of Machiavelli, who was a Renaissance writer and a thinker. He wrote the book called The Prince. Many people know The Prince. But he did probably more than anyone else to revive these pagan Greco-Roman philosophies. And he writes about republics in his book called Discourses on Livy. This was in 1517, ironically, the same year that uh, Martin Luther nails his 95 thesis to the door of the Wittenberg Church starting the Reformation. So as we can see here, Discourses on Livy, it praises the ancient Roman Republic as superior to current governments. It shares lessons on how to keep, maintain, and expand uh, a republic and even turn it into an empire. And he, has, he levels a lot of criticism uh, against the church. That's what you'll find mostly with those who are promoting uh, these ancient Greco-Roman philosophies in the time post-Renaissance. You'll find that all of them Almost every single one of them also have criticism of the church. They're not crazy about the church, but they sure do like the ancient Greco-Romans. Here's a little quote from chapter 12. He says, the church, and this is an example of his criticism of the church. He says, the church has kept and still keeps this country of ours divided. And truly no country was ever united or happy except when it gave its obedience entirely to one republic or prince. This is his idea, is that we really have to cut ties to the church We've really got to make this much more about a city-state. We've got to make it much more about a republic, and everybody then will have something in common. Uh, and then, of course, this is also going to be exploited by the Age of Enlightenment, right? The primary aim of both the European and the American Enlightenment was to question authority. Now, we have a whole other teaching on the topic of the Enlightenment that's coming. The Enlightenment is a very unique topic that's very, very interesting. We don't have time to get into it this morning. Okay, so now, moving from Greece then to Rome, then to this dead period where there's no democracy at all whatsoever, not even the mention of it in any writing. And then Machiavelli is the one who really begins to bring it out, and he's the one who really begins to promote it. Then we have uh, a lot about democracy that comes out slowly leading up to the birth of America. So America, of course, in the 18th century was the full realization of many of these ancient Greco-Roman philosophies, certainly the realization of what Machiavelli was writing about. And it occurs, of course, in the 18th century. 